My name is Anne Gidner. I'm the CEO of Zikum. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, I'm delighted to present our technology platform. We have a technology platform uh, addressing uh, biopharmaceuticals in general, the mRNA more specifically, creating tremendous value. Uh, we are enabling groundbreaking innovation. Uh, we have right now uh, a revolution in the pharmaceutical industry, you can say. There's a new era because of the mRNA platform. Uh, this, this new technology you can address previously undruggable genes. You can just code a genetic code to treat any kind of disease. This is opening up entirely new possibilities across indications. However, this platform comes with significant limitations. Uh, this is a quote from an analytical report that this platform really needs advancement in delivery and in stability. That's when it can be applied broadly across industry. And this is what we do in Zikum. We have a technology which is unique. Uh, it's a disruptive technology where we are enabling drug delivery and we are solving all the stability issues for biologics in general and for mRNA more specifically. And right now we have generated extensive data, uh, externally validated repeatedly, and it's excellent data as well. I will show you a quick, a quick uh, picture of this. So what is this industry need? Uh, we are turning liquid biologics into thermostable dry powder. So going from these super fragile uh, COVID vaccine doses, for example, in uh, mRNA-based vaccine has to be treated cryogenically, minus 80 degrees, as everybody heard of during the pandemic. Taking that to a robust, simple, easy to use dry powder form with perfect profit properties. It sounds quite simple, uh, but this is creating very, very significant value. First of all, you can improve the current treatment management of drugs. Uh, existing drugs or new drugs, obviously you get thermostability, you can crack the entire uh, cryogenic chain with enormous savings. You have an enormous sustainability gain, which is a key uh, challenge in pharma industry today. Uh, we have to address the sustainability and the carbon footprint, which is gigantic for vaccine campaigns. But on top of that, with our technology, you can enable completely new treatments. And this is the biggest value. Uh, completely changing the cost level, you can address completely new indications to target these undruggable genes. Also usability, uh, patient friendliness, we can enable completely new delivery forms such as inhalation. Uh, and we are currently working on, we have very good readouts on excellent particle engineering to give perfect inhalation. I also have a cliffhanger, which will come later in the presentation. So on the high value side, there's a third component, uh, which is news. And then on the more practical side, uh, if you would be able to dry your drug by an old school technology, we can still provide significant cost savings thanks to high yield and low, low operational expenses. Just quickly, quickly looking at existing technologies. The old school, low-tech method is lyophilization. Uh, it has a lot of shortcomings. Uh, it's difficult to apply for, for biologics. It's very difficult to apply for mRNA. As the whole industry has gone to spray drying, and this is a far more engineered process. As a chemical engineer, I can like all these well-defined steps. Uh, with, with uh, good process control and so on. But it's far too harsh for biologics. It only works for small molecules. It has uh, numerous mechanical stress factors and a very harsh temperature stress, obviously, because you dry it at plus 80 degrees, perhaps. Uh, so it's important to understand we have a completely different technology based on a completely unique principle. Uh, so what is this principle? Laminar paste. Uh, we are drawing biologics by mass transfer. Uh, in years of development, we have enabled to make mass transfer work instead of heat transfer, thus reducing the solvent uh, in a very efficient drying process, only taking seconds. So each molecule is only exposed for a few seconds before it's dried. Practically, uh, it's a module rig we have developed for plug and play. So a module ready to be implemented in existing facilities. Uh, so really an easy step to take to gain enormous upsides. 
Uh, we as a company, we're operating three pilot suites currently here in Lund. Uh, we are running paid feasibility studies, so we take assignments. Uh, we are working with big pharma and with very interesting biotech companies. Uh, the technology consists of both formulation knowledge and then drying technology together. Uh, and this is a technology licensing business model. We have tested this for all kinds of biologics. Uh, it's working for ev everything here you can see. Proteins, peptides, enzymes, antibodies, viral vectors, uh, more vaccine types. Currently we are, we are focusing strategically on mRNA in LMPs because that's the most fragile entity. It's the most expensive entity. It's the highest value really uh, implementing this change. But this is only the top of the pyramid or the peak of the iceberg. Uh, we can go forward and, and establish more markets with lots of other entities. And this is my cliffhanger. This is something we are investigating very intensely right now. Because here we have a potential fourth big value inflection point. Uh, that we are not only preserving the activity when we are treating mRNA, we are even increasing it uh, when we have been able to optimize the lipid composition. So we have excellent scientists uh, trying to keep up with all the development in, in LMP composition. That is a big race in industry now with the mRNA revolution. Uh, and we have several, repeatedly, we, we can create several different modalities where we can increase the, the activity with our treatment. And this is, of course, an even bigger in value inflection point here. Uh, just one more slide on data readouts. We have created lots of data during one year. Uh, one of the milestones is in vivo data. So we had uh, a very good, good local Lund CRO performing an in vivo study for us. Uh, fluorescent mRNA coding uh, was perfectly expressed in these trials. Two different animal models and we had excellent preservation of activity here. Uh, very quickly on major milestones, so we have proven the platform extensively for mRNA, like mentioned. Uh, we have business milestones, we are signing agreements with big pharma and big biotech companies uh, to run paid feasibility studies. We have readouts from one of these with excellent uh, validated results from our partner. We have the in vivo results. Uh, we have a very ambitious effort to model the technology in a digital environment. Because this is a unique technology, it would take years or even decades to develop if we didn't speed it up. So we have implemented a very ambitious program to do 3D development of the technology. And we now have this model built, so we can now generate digital data in addition to physical readouts. Uh, it's also very important to secure intellectual property, since we are a licensing uh, business model. And we have secured a very significant amount of intellectual property now. We went in with three large PCT patent applications just now in April. Uh, so this is nicely completed now. Uh, market potential and plan ahead, finally. Uh, the business model is a licensing, like I said. Currently, we have started being revenue generating in 23 uh, with paid studies. Uh, when we get to license stage, we will have milestones and royalties. Speaking of market potential, I said a lot about mRNA already. There is a revolution for a number of very good reasons. Uh, and here is also an overview of the tremendous race in industry currently. All these companies who want to get into the field, start mRNA projects, create vaccines. It's all the existing vaccines players, it's all the big pharmas, and there's hundreds of biotechs racing in this field. Uh, so we consider our addressable market very significant. Uh, if we just look, we can treat all kinds of biologics, but just looking at the mRNA section of RNA, uh, there's a market predicted now to grow from 40 billion to 60 billion dollars per year. And we uh, count on a royalty with low one digit numbers. So very conservative on, on that and adding two more vaccine platforms we would have an addressable market now for 600 to 1.8 billion US dollars per year. And this is just Western world. Uh, roadmap, we have made great progress building the company and securing top tier partnerships. 
Uh, we are taking our master plan forward and we are taking the 3D modeling project forward. Right now, it's very important to execute on the paid studies. But what we want to do now is to secure further partnerships because there's so much interest in industry. So investment we are looking for is really to expand our organization and to expand our pilot capacity as well. Uh, and then there's a few slides here just on the company. We are based here in Lund. Uh, we're a public company listed at Nasdaq First North. Uh, I'm the CEO. I have a very long background in leadership roles in large corporations, mainly based in the US and in Germany. Uh, and we have a terrific board of directors. Uh, there's an update here because we had our AGM yesterday, so we have a new chairman of the board, but we couldn't disclose that until today. Uh, and then before I thank you, I want to say I'm staying here for the rest of the day to answer questions. I also have my colleague, Kristo Vasilev, our finance manager. Uh, we would be very happy to answer your questions and discuss further. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, and for that presentation. Uh, just a couple of questions here. Um, what are your expectations for the long-term impact of the uh, laminar pace feasibility study? The long-term impact? Yeah. Um, the, feasibil the feasibility study is the first step mm -hmm. in the dialogue with the partner. So that's the proof of concept. After that, we typically will optimize the, the applicability for one specific application. And then it's the negotiation of a term sheet for a license. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and speaking of, uh, of partnering, you, you mentioned that here uh, towards the end. Could you tell us a little bit more about your pa partnering strategy? Indeed, uh, we have a very good outreach. We have built a name very quickly in industry. Mm -hmm. We take part in, in, in really fantastic forums. Uh, there's the, the mRNA Leadership Summit, for example, twice a year, mm -hmm. uh, one in Europe and one in the US. There we have the most important and, and most keen players to develop mRNA projects. So that's where we pick up really excellent dialogues. Uh, strategically, we are targeting the people with the, with the most vulnerable modalities, right, who really need to, to change something. Mm -hmm. uh, another important target segment is inhalation, inhalation companies, where we have them perfect particle engineering uh, offering so you can change you know just a, a in lyophilization for example you cannot tweak anything you cannot guide what you want to achieve mm -hmm. but with laminar pace you can get a perfectly formed morphology for efficient inhalation mm -hmm. yeah. and in terms of regional markets are there some that uh, um, you will focus on more than others <laughs> Uh, no, we address Western world pharma, mm -hmm. you know, so it's Europe, US and, and uh, Japan, mm -hmm. main, mainly. I really enjoyed the, the Japan introduction we got here. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned the fact that uh, RNA has the, har the highest value in terms of, um, yeah, biologics. Uh, why is that? It's a very expensive production process, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then you have this super complicated spherical particle of lipids that has to like each other, mm -hmm. right? You ha and, and they are free, free floating in water, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very, very difficult to change that status. And yeah. that's why, and they are so fragile, they have to be treated at minus 80 normally, right? Mm -hmm. That is expensive. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see here, I have time for one more question. So uh, someone is asking, uh, what milestones do you anticipate to achieve within the next two years? What main milestones? That's a good question. Mm. It will be very, very important time the next two years here. Mm. Uh, I think a more general milestone is to add more partners uh, on several platforms, not just mRNA, mm. because I shouldn't overstress the mRNA field, right? Because we do have partners for other modalities. So broadening the pipeline, that's the first step. And the second key value inflection point is really to land our first licensing agreement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, great. We yeah. look forward to that. And, yeah. Uh, thank yeah. you so much, Anne, for yeah. your presentation again. Thank you. Mm -hmm.